Hello, this video is going to be me and my girlfriend here reacting to and giving our tips on our trip to Tokyo, Japan in February of 2023. This was my first time ever going to Japan. My girlfriend has been quite a few times before. And yeah, uh, at this point I was like learning Japanese for basically like a month. So it was only slightly helpful. And I was just gonna go into the experience with open hearts and open minds. Basically, I'm just gonna put us in a little box like we're on Japanese television and we're just gonna watch and react to the whole thing and offer some commentary where applicable. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. And here we are on our way to Melbourne Airport. Uh, the way it worked out, we had to kind of transit through Sydney to get to Tokyo. Were there a lot of people waiting for us? So there was just like you? Uh, Melbourne to Sydney is about a 90 minute flight if things uh, all go to plan. I pretty much took footage non stop. Cool and Qantas and got a little snacky. Little and give us some pumpkin dip and three crackers. And I got a little gingy beer. There we are landing, beautiful Darling Harbour. And then transiting through. Uh, Sydney, you have to kind of go from domestic to international. You have to take this bu uh, bus, which isn't super convenient. Only if you have your boarding pass ready. Mm. Otherwise, you might have to check in and out again. Yeah, you have to pick your bags up. I mm. think here we're just having a look around Gentle Monsters in Sydney Airport, so that's pretty cool. Here's the famous uh, Maccas with the conveyor belt, like the two-story Maccas uh, in the international terminal. But then we've also got a little salad there, kind of stay healthy and balanced before we kind of eat whatever we want to while we're in Japan. Again, this is uh, February 2023, so you might see some retro items here, like that quarter pounder and these nugs uh, and this Cajun sauce. I always want to point that out. I like that Cajun sauce. It tasted to me like, um, what is it? Spicy nugs. The ones that they used to have like ages and ages ago. Like different style, not the one they have now, which doesn't taste like anything. Anyways, that's besides the point. So yeah, just footage of us eating, which is going to happen a lot in this trip. To a degree. We're getting dinner, right? I wonder if it's going to be the Asian menu. Cool, I think, First Nations slash Indigenous flags hanging up in the terminal. And this, like, I think it's a hokey pokey, I guess you'd call it a McFlurry. Not a bad, big fan of it, it seems like. No, I've had better hokey pokey. And as you can see, we're going to be going to Haneda Airport on the QF25. Haneda, if my Japanese is correct, means feather fields or something to that effect. On board now, got the classic uh, in-flight safety video. Meal time. Now, I'm not going to be able to perfectly recall what this is. Looks like Asian noodles. And I think this was polenta, not mashed potatoes, but it might've been. And a little sweet treat. We always like to get one of each meal just so we can share, share. experience the different meals. That's always a good strategy if you can swing it, if the options are good to you. A little chalky, little quiche. Uh, Melbourne to- breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, breakfast time. Melbourne to Sydney is a, oh, Melbourne to, sorry, Sydney to Tokyo is about how long? I think it was like eight nine hours. Eight, nine hours, maybe. Depends on the wind. And so we landed early as in uh, Tokyo. So we basically had the whole day ahead of us, which is great. Uh, got a little bit of sleep on the plane, I remember. But other than that, just running on pure adrenaline. Again, my first time ever, and definitely um, our first time basically since. Uh, the uh, shmandemic um, <laughs> and basically just getting stuck in you saw the icoca card there the ic card that just lets you tap on to a lot of the uh, public transport and here we are waiting for a train to take us from haneda a couple of transfers along the way but heading to tokyo really or heading to the big metropolis the big smoke the biggest smoke in the world i think we were on this little um this train that had the little twin stars on it and it was really cute twin stars is like a for the Sanrio fans out there. They're Sanrio, Sanrio characters. And so for context, your mum uh, was already uh, in Tokyo. And then 
we met up with her and she just gave us some snacks to kind of、uh, refuel us. And that would be the first thing we ended up eating in Japan. First thing I ever ate ever in Japan, me personally. And this is where we were staying, the k a r i p r e s s o Inn. This is us having our onigiri and our, I think that was a prawn sandwich. It's a pretty solid business hotel, has、um, breakfast every morning. Decently sized rooms.、Hmm. So, just a quick refuel though before we tackle the day. I mean, like, we're not gonna. I mean, we did shower, doesn't <laughs> matter. Anyways,、uh, just planning out how to transit through. I'm pretty uh, uh, lost for words at this point because I don't know what's going on, but just、uh, taking it as it comes. It And the first thing we ended up buying with our own money,、uh, besides, I guess, the train fare, <laughs> was this、uh, milk tea that you can get in Melbourne. It's nothing special, but I just wanted to experience the magic of the Japanese vending machine firsthand. Took a few tries to figure out, but that's okay.、Uh, you all learn by experience, and then you know how it works, and the bottle got stuck for some reason, I guess. And here we are, capturing this moment live. I think it just, <laughs> it just slid down my throat. Didn't get to taste much, but there we are. And here we are. We are actually on the way to Skiji Market.、Um, what do you think of that Skiji Market as someone who has been a couple of times and、uh, I guess thought it might be a good place for me to go initially? I think it's definitely changed since I last went. Fair enough. It still has the vendors outside and like places to eat, and it's more of a casual eatery compared to the new Toyosu Market. But I do enjoy like street food style. Mm. Eateries, so、mm. I, I enjoy it. Just to step in here and say, this is the first thing we ever ate at Skiji Market, and it was ramen, quote unquote, but it wasn't actually that. It was okay. It was more like a Chinese style noodle soup as opposed to a lot of the、uh, ramens you'll get elsewhere in Japan. So that's what that was.、Um, then next up, we weren't necessarily super satisfied, or we just wanted to try different things. We had this monja croquette, which is like made from a root. Uh, that's not, it's not just potato that you might imagine.、Uh, didn't get too much footage of this, but they were basically sea food flavor. They、volcanic. were really hot inside. <laughs> Burned your face off.、Uh, checking out some pottery, just walking around the market. This ended up being a public holiday when we landed, which we did not know about. You want to take this matcha stand? It's a really good matcha place. I kind of. What's the name of it? Matcha stand, the matcha stand. <laughs> Yep, to make it in front of you.、Um, very popular with tourists, but it was good. Like, it's not a trap in the sense that it's not worth it. I think I ordered the extra rich matcha and it definitely delivered on the rich part.、Hmm. It was probably really a kick in the guts in a good way. <laughs> a, gr- a good kick in the guts, really heavily caffeinated, you're getting you throughout the morning. Very popular. You'll see it in a whole bunch of videos. Walking around, checking different stalls. Bit of squid sample.、Uh, this is a daifuku, it's like a mochi filled with like red bean and it's got a strawberry on top. Not the biggest fan of mochi, but fun thing to try out. I just find it really hard to eat because you want to、yeah. taste everything in one bite. It's hard to get everything in one bite. Basically, the middle of it is the best, but it lasts a short time. Little market map that I think one of the stores was giving out. This is like a seafood stick, but it's filled with horseradish, I think. I made a YouTube short on this. But yeah. Oh, isn't that fun? And basically, I'm just, we're just speed running、uh, all these different k i n d of stands, trying out different things. I guess we have the appetite for it, you know, when you're tired and you're quite hungry, k i n d of to make up for the fact that you didn't sleep that much. But also, it's just, why not? You know, when in Rome. Delicious fried fish cakes. Oh, yeah. This is like corn, potato, and like an onion y kind of thing with some fish. Yeah. Yeah, the one closest to your hand was some fish. Then some souvenir shopping. There was a cool little stuffed, I don't know what that is, like a lynx looking thing. And then another、uh, convenience store. Actually, this is the first convenience store I would have ever want, went to and gone inside. Bit daunting at the start, but. You'll have to quickly get used to that. And little Buddhist temple just on the way back. Nice to check out. Don't really try and film inside temples too much. 
not the very least because they don't really want you to. Taking another train. Might have heard there a little train jingle. And we've gone to Akihabara. <laughs> uh, basically, I think it's Electric Town is the nickname. I hope I'm choosing the right one. And then we saw this little cat cafe nearby. I think at this point we were just tired from eating and walking around. So we decided to, why not, why not just sit down in a cat cafe? I think Japan are kind of the, the originators of the cat cafe concept, would you say? Yeah, I agree. Mm. And I think we also miss pickles, so... Our cat pickles, which hopefully many viewers would know. Uh, you know, whatever you have to say about cat cafes, this one seemed nice. The cat seemed well treated. It's not something we go to a lot. And I was very surprised by the drinks, actually, how you just pay your entrance free and like these vending machines, you basically can have as many drinks as you want. Not that you want to drink so much, but, you know, they're not stingy about that. You just get a little cup and get a drink. You can also buy some treats for yeah. the cats, which they love. There we are. And especially I think a lot of Japanese people don't have pets at home. So this is kind of a way they get to kind of play with cats and sort of experience it and hang out with friends, I guess. It is a cafe. You can drink stuff. Not much to say. Cute cats. <laughs> <laughs> And then left the cat cafe and going to the famous Yodabashi camera in Akihabara. So this is a giant department store basically and uh, I'm not sure if this one has restaurants, I'm sure it does, but you know, it's basically like a Maya or a David Jones, but with um, mostly electronic stuff there. Electronics, toys, games, pop culture, that kind of thing. Anything? No. Uh, yeah. It's like walking into a... 13 story JB Hi-Fi Yeah basically And I don't think I've ever Really bought anything Maybe one thing ever In all the times I've been Whoop There's a little event On outside But yeah I'm just not in the market For stuff at the moment But it was good to check out Here we are just Walking around You know Stereotypical Japan You're going to spend All your time walking But here we are at uh, Kikambo Ramen So this is a very Famous ramen place There were a few locations But Uh this was a public holiday and we ended up waiting in line here for about an hour and a half. Uh, so long, in fact, that I had to go to a nearby 7-Eleven. So this is my second, uh, what is it, convenience store trip and got a little chicken skewer while we were waiting. Didn't ruin the appetite though, as you'll see. Uh, what they specialize here is in a spicy ramen. So it's not just chili spice they've got actually another different kind of pepper and you can kind of manage the levels of the spices there uh but yeah you got to order outside at the front at a little vending machine get your little ticket and hand it into the staff once you actually make it inside the restaurant so you got to really commit to that line you can choose your spice levels and also um like a peppery taste yep I mentioned that. that. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so I got a ramen while my girlfriend here got a skamen dipping noodles just to try one of each. And, you know, is it 90 minutes good? If you've got nothing else to do, maybe. But for the most part, I'd probably only wait 40 minutes for this. It was really good, though. The flavors were just out of this world. Nice big chunks of pork belly. And this was only at, like... Four o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. so it wasn't during peak hour or anything. Yeah. But anyways, it might be on a lot of ramen lists if you just Google places to eat ramen in Japan or in Tokyo. But all in all, very good experience. Um, <laughs> highly recommend it. If you're not waiting too long. Anyways, we're making our way back to kind of the hotel area. I think at this point we're pretty tired. A uh, lot of lights around. Oh, actually, I do remember what we're doing now. We're just going back for a bit of kip, a bit of a refresher. And then we're heading out again, just because I think it was too early at that point to go to sleep. And we're heading just on foot to uh, a department store called Loft in Ginza. Loft's a chain, but we wanted to do a bit of shopping. So we thought might as well take it to the streets. And this is the only store that we went to because we spent about two hours yeah. inside. But... If shopping is something you like to do, Japan has that by the bucket load. 
But afterwards, you know, I've hit up all of the convenience stores today, the big three, Family Mart, Lawson and 7-Eleven, ending our dinner here, oh, ending our day here with dinner from Family Mart. I got a little mentaiko, which is a cod roe pasta. Uh, you got a whole bunch of stuff. I don't think it ate it all that day. I think it was more kind of for supplies. I think I was feeling a little under the weather, so I definitely stocked up on those um, vitamin yeah, but little drinks. vitamin pouches. Japan has so much of that stuff. And here we are just back in our hotel lobby, actually, because I think our room was a little bit small to eat all this stuff and kind of do a spread. There we are, doing your little influencer showcase. Little vitamin pouch keeps you going. And there's my little pasta that you microwave in the 7-Eleven and then hopefully you don't have to wait too long to eat it again. But yeah, nice and hot. You know, Japanese convenience stores, famous the world over for being able to offer you decent food for the price and it's hot and fresh. This is, um, we went to Family Mart, so this is what they call Famichiki or Famichiki, Family Mart chicken essentially. Comes in a little pouch and people say it's very juicy and stuff. I think it is, but you know, they just brine it and... They crumb it and they fry it and cook it well. So uh, they just got a right technique. Okay, so I guess that video ended sooner than I thought. Um, but anyways, that was our first day in Japan. You saw it basically from start to finish, including the transit from Melbourne. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.